Hi, this is Farrell. Welcome to my video and channel. And this is uh, page eight of issue two of Robot Todd. I've been doing these videos of just my, my process each page that I do. And uh, yeah, so let's get right into it. This page required some thumbnails. You can see here I did some quick ones in my sketchbook. If you roll the video back before, you can see, yeah, they're blank there, but then I did them later. And then, yep, added... I did like more refined thumbnails there and I was pretty happy with the th with the thumbnails look. So I was trying to get like that energy or that feeling or the composition of those thumbnails onto the paper. And instead of what I've done before in the past is I've actually, if I really liked the thumbnails, I'd blow them up on a photocopy machine and lightboard them. <clears throat> but this, I was like, well, they're pretty loose and I, I you know, I imagine I can just do you know, pretty much copy them, transcribe them, or whatever, onto the paper. And I'm using a different paper here. This is more like a watercolor paper because it, uh, for some reason, the UPS order that uh, I I got get this this specific kind of paper that you can look in the description of which kind of paper I normally use. But uh, the for whatever reason, the shipping was just taking a really long time. And um, I just was like, okay, I'll just use this other paper that I have. And it was a little harder to draw on, but I think my main problem with this was I was just, um, I kept adding lettering to it. Like I had a bunch of dialogue that I, I write, write the whole book out. I've written the whole series out on, in my notes app. But as I approach each page, some, some pages are a little more realized in the notes app. You can see here that I just erased that first panel. <laughs> so I was like getting pretty frustrated with this page. It's like, it seemed like every hour that I would work on this, I would just kind of doodle a bunch on the page, trying to get the, the right kind of drawing going and then just get frustrated and erase it all. And yeah, I think once that I realized that I didn't really need all that dialogue on there, I, I, uh, you can see I keep making word balloons and trying to make them fit and it just wasn't really clicking and then once I realized that oh I'll just dump all this and just kind of have fun drawing um, even moving in that second panel I, I kept trying to figure out how I wanted Fern's uh, word balloon to go like I wanted it to be like a word balloon above the I figured I would put it kind of above the art you know, where like the main art action is happening and draw like a long tail all the way down to her head. So, you, you know, you would know which person was saying it because there's like three characters all kind of clumped together. But then I realized like I didn't really need to do that because, um, you know, you're kind of you're kind of like there's a reader sort of like far away from that action. And it, it made more sense just to have the lettering small. And I was like, I don't even need a word balloon. I can just draw it on the back of the, you know, in like the back sort of in the background or floating above her head. And I felt like it worked a lot better that way. And that's uh, the only other, I think, dialogue that ended up being on the page was something that I I just added after. It wasn't even in the notes app or anything of, of uh, Sep just saying, go, go, go. And I thought it would be kind of nice to have the little doll character instead of, you know, because it's sort of like an imaginary, not imaginary, but it's sort of like only Sep can see the doll uh, and so it, it's usually like in a panel, in every panel, kind of just floating or walking by Sept. But I thought it would be kind of cool to actually just put her in the in the word balloon, like she's saying one of the goes. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I was just kind of like uh, happy about that little a uh, little thing. I, I, I've done that a few times with this comic where I've I've included uh, some. Uh, I've almost had like the word balloon be a panel. And it, it's, it's something I haven't really done in, in other work that I've done that much. Um, but it just feels right for this particular story. I started with issue one doing that with um, with Fern, like looking from far away. And I was like, oh, I'll put her in this word balloon because it just kind of works with the with the story. And uh, yeah, so this is pretty much the, the finished pencils here before I'm inking it. And I, I just did a little... Uh, kind of zoom in there so you could get a better look at at sort of the degree of of tightness that the pencils have when I you know right before I I'm inking them so here I'm just inking with a micron pen or a, excuse me a Faber-Castell pit pen I used to use those Pigma micron pens um, but I switched over many years ago 
but I still, for some reason, call them micro armbands a lot of times. But um, since I'm doing this video, it's all official and everything. Let's stick to the real names. And uh, as I mentioned before, all the the just all the uh, materials that I use is mentioned in the comment section, not the comment section, but the description below the title of the video. If you want to check that out. Um, yeah, so uh, I usually start with the lettering, and I did that first with the with the pit pen. I went in, did the goes, and the sound effects, the splum, splum, splum that Fern's Rifle's making. And uh, us usually what happens is uh, I'll, I'll generally ink with a brush. Like it's kind of the way I've, I've done it in the past, but um, with this comic, I do a lot more. And the last comic I did too, Proxima Centauri, I do a lot more where um, I start inking the lettering with the pit pen and then I'll just sort of kind of it just sort of like bleeds over into the doing the artwork with the pit pen so I'll start off at first <clears throat> oh yeah someone to uh mentioned in the comments last time last video that they never see me erase so you just saw it right there I do erase these pages there are uh pencils on board that I ink over and then watercolor on top of and I, I kind of selectively erase certain parts and certain parts I add a little pencil to because when you when you do the watercoloring on top of the pencils it kind of gets rid of that like uh sort of the waxy sheen that pencils have um that you know I don't like just using graphite as like my you know medium uh generally I, I like something a little more like uh sort of heavy permanent feeling but um, I like the subtlety of it mixed with the watercolor. So sometimes if I'll, I'll be, you know, inking with a brush or a pen or something, um, I'll, I'll go back in even sometimes a little bit and start rendering little areas with a pencil. Because if I know, especially if I know it, I'm going to watercolor on top of it, because then I can just kind of go in with the watercolor and sort of just go on top of that with the with the paint. And uh, it kind of has like a nice uh, soft quality that... Uh, that uh i don't know lends itself to uh i don't know shaping out the the form a little bit um instead of just being like okay i'm gonna do a line drawing and then uh color on top of that and you know the felt color and all the color it's like paint by numbers or something it, it feels a little more um i guess like painterly or something for me to to use uh you know just multimedia i guess um yeah, so, uh, yeah, here I'm, it's, they're still in this, like, blue zone, uh, in this, like, cave, uh, I don't, you know, even know what it is, it's sort of like a, like an abandoned city, and these, uh, creatures that the wizard created a long time ago, that the, the sort of bad guy in the comic, abandoned, and, you know, left just, uh, their own devices here in this cave, they basically murder anything that comes in there, it's like this, they're like the dominant life form, I guess, of this, this, uh, underground s sub structure area. And, uh, yeah, so the, in the, if you've seen any of the previous videos or, uh, seen any of these pages from this book, you can see that they had gotten a big fight with these gremlin creatures. And so they've, in the last couple of pages, they merged together and formed this big sort of blobby thing that is trying to kill the the good guys or the heroes or whoever the people were following through the story so yeah that was like the first pass of colors uh it's pretty much almost done there and then i think this is like the last last session that i had just last night where i, I went in and tried to touch up a bunch of areas and clean it up so yeah we have the first panel here uh they're them running from this big blobby creature Splum, 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 which is a little onomatopoeia I, I made up. Um, I figured, like, that's probably what that gun sounds like. Um, she, like, pulls the gun out, and it kind of sort of, like, is transforming into a gun. And then second panel, realizing it's, it's not working. And then so the third, in the third panel, the gun's kind of going away, and she's going to throw this grenade thing that she mentioned earlier on, that she had these, like, sonic grenade things. And, uh... Yeah, she's like about to throw it in the third panel. And then as she's about to throw it, you can kind of see the gun is sort of going back to her backpack. And I thought, oh, that'd be fun just to have like the, some words on there. Like, you know, instead of her saying, which I had originally, like, I'm going to throw my grenade or something like that. It's like, you can just see it on the stuff, like the gun's going back to the backpack. 
So that's the finished page this time. Thanks for watching the video. I have a Patreon, Feral Dow. Bye.